Rigoberto Duran, a great climber oh, from Colombia. What's going on? Hey, Bob, there's, a, there's, there's half a dozen cows getting up to the field. Somebody's crashed into one of those massive big cows there. This is, this is just at the back end of the main field. Unbelievable. Well, when a cow gets on the road, and uh, you see that Yusuke Tail Rider is hurt badly by that, so a, a big crash here being caused by something you... Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen this in my whole life, a cow being out on the race course. Well, uh, that looks that looks to me as if the, the rider from uh, Uscatilla went down very hard there indeed, Bob. And uh, we're just looking back here. This is a very dramatic crash. It happened, a massive cow got onto the field there. That, that I've rarely seen that before. It looks like a rider went down from FDJ. And there's a couple of riders also been involved in there from uh, AG2R. You could tell, man, down hard, looking like a broken collarbone right there, and the peloton absolutely steaming down the road. Cattle out on the race course, never seen that before, <laughs> huge. ever in my life. That's a huge cow, Bob. And I mean, those guys, if they were involved in that accident, they went down extremely hard. And I think the Uscatel rider was uh, Mikhail Alanda, number 103, went down very hard indeed. A couple of teammates alongside him. Well, that's crazy. That's unbelievable. I mean, you, you have dogs, that, that happens quite frequently, but never a cow out on the course. And here you can see some cattle just getting out on the course there and running along with the peloton, spooked by the big mass of riders coming down this very small country back lane. And you can see there's no fence right there, and they're what? just following the leader, and kapow! You've got to understand, Bob. You have to understand, Bob, that this stadium is not an enclosed stadium. The race is in the countryside. You cannot control every element, and that's exactly what's happened. I'm surprised there was no fence to keep those cows in, but sometimes the cows get spooked, maybe by the helicopter, maybe by the motorbikes, and all of a sudden, chaos on the road of the Dauphiné. swoich dyrektorów o przewadze, jaką posiadają, e, o tym e, jak pracować. I za moment spróbujemy podjechać do e, naszego wozu, do Adama Wadeckiego i spróbujemy się dowiedzieć, jakie zalecenia dla Adama Stachowiaka, jaki plan jest na dalszą część tego etapu. Przecież e, to jest jeszcze e, no, blisko 100 km mają do pokonania kolarza, a przecież te najgorsze elementy, te najtrudniejsze, najbardziej strome odcinki trasy dopiero przed nimi. A więc za moment podjedziemy do biało-czerwonego samochodu polskiej e, reprezentacji. I porozmawiamy z Adamem Wadeckim. Kurs chce się ścigać, proszę Państwa, z kolarzami. Wielka sensacja. Nikt się tym specjalnie nie przejął, bo nie było zagrożenia. Nawet tam cmokali na niego i spokojnie wyprzedzili. No, ale nie poddaje się, ale nie wygląda ale to dobrze, bo jak... Spanikuje to. O, tu chyba ktoś go. Ktoś go e... Is it a peloton? Oh, there's a cow <laughs> just in the road. I don't know if you saw oh, that. Boy, That's I what did. race radio was crackling about there. There was a cow coming across the road. Oh boy, this is not the sort of hazard you want on the descent of the Tour de France at all. Wow, and that uh, is one of the uh, the white cows of uh, the uh, Bernays. And uh, talk about poor old Warren Bargy. I don't know how he got through there, Phil, but that was almost a hamburger. Well, I tell you, you know, all the tours I've seen, I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> But here's the footage of the accident at the start today. And soon after the breakaway established, the rider at the back here is in fact uh, Frederick Willems. The dog comes out and it takes out in fact Kassar first and Willems second. Willems, uh, the dog in fact ran away and um, seemingly okay, which uh, was, was fine. There's the dog gone. The Frederick Willems, uh, he went back to the peloton after that fall. And here it is again for you. So it's very unfortunate, but the, really the people uh, should have had that dog under control there. Die Stahlrösser bekamen heute am ersten von zwei Tagen des Kriterium International Begleitung von einem Ross aus Fleisch und Blut. 188 Kilometer durch Südfrankreich waren dem Pferd dann aber doch zu viel. Es überließ den Sieg dem Franzosen Stefan Barth, der im Spurt den Italiener Traversoni besiegte. Morgen reiten sie weiter. Soweit Sportcenter mit Ralf Itzel. The beautiful Alpine Tats, and that is not a good sight. Well, have they made it? Oh dear, look at that wheel collapse, and the dog didn't seem to know what was going on. 
Well, I hope he's all right. He seems to be okay. And that uh, looks like it's Marcus Berghardt there. Well, he was fortunate enough to almost slow down just before he broadsided the dog. The dog actually didn't seem to be very concerned at all, but I hope that Marcus Burkhardt wow. is OK and he picks himself up. He was lucky enough, uh, Phil, I have to say, to fall into the side of the road where it was just that little bit softer, but that's a, a scary moment. Have a look at this one more time. The riders have got a full lock on there. He's locking everything up and uh, he's completely destroyed his front wheel there. That'll be a carbon fibre front wheel. He rolled re fairly well. Well, he looks OK, Paul. That wheel really did fold up. And it wasn't as if the Tour de France wasn't expected down here today. And they really should have taken more care of keeping that dog under control. He should be OK. And that's just happened as we join the live pictures, believe it or not. We're now looking... Zusammen mit dem Spanier David Lopez ging es im Galopp Richtung Ziel. Was den Leichtathleten der Hase war den Radrennfahren heute das Pferd. Erst ein aufmerksamer Streckenposten machte aus dem Trio wieder ein Duo. Of riders in the race down to 163 from the original 198. Now then, a couple of crashes to report early on, both in the same farmer's field, funnily enough. First, this girl went down, trying to keep up with the polka dot king of the mountains pony. Then a young mate, who at least had the advantage of being nearer the ground to start with. She came off too, executing a perfect judo throw on her mount as she went. All of them were fine, by the way, otherwise we wouldn't be joking about them. Only one crash actually on the road, Robbie McEwen, who seemed to bring himself down. Up front, an eight-man breakaway group formed, and in it was Lance. Il mio amico va per ma c'è un casino. Heading into the bunch, no panic, no teammates, no problems. I think the way the team have acted this afternoon, Phil, they're not really concerned about Fabian Cancellara holding on to the overall lead this afternoon. I think he will lose time on the final climb of the day, but it depends on how the climbers attack the ascent. If there is a lot of attacking and a lot of changes of pace, that will not be good for Fabian Cancellara because although he's got a big engine, it's a little bit like a big diesel engine. He can get it up to high speed and keep it at that one rhythm for a very long time. But climbers like Alberto Contador, they like to go uphill by accelerating and slowing down, accelerating and slowing down, and that, uh, that actually assassinates a rider like Fabian Cancellara. Dizzy old chases and our camera keeping up with him here on these narrow roads. He carves his way through. Andy Streck, you mentioned there, Paul, he said this morning, by the way, that uh, he'd see well, how his body is going to react and how the form is, uh, but he's very conscious of the fact that two and a half thousand feet, 
Uh, beforehand, there's the doctor's car. Oh, goodness me. Well, well, you can't blame the doctor's car, he's got nowhere else to go. Well, no, uh, but bear in mind, Cancellara is a superb bike handler. And of the 180 that started a week ago from Monaco. He's not back yet, but oh, goodness me, see you in a minute. Just moving up there, Cancellara doesn't seem ruffled at all by that little bit of a, a chase that he's had to put on. He really is a phenomenal bike rider. Last year he did great work in the mountains to set up for, for the victory of Carlos Sastra. The Monday morning after the tour finished, he jumped on a plane and flew to Beijing. And he wanted to get used to the time change. He reckoned it took one day for every hour of the time difference to get himself onto Chinese time. And of course he wanted to get used to the weather and climatic conditions there. And he probably made the best investment of anybody else because he absolutely walked away with the gold medal in the team time in the individual time trial